Hello, everybody. My name is Ari, and you are listening to Bass Tunes on KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. If you want to check out my socials, go to B A S E D T U N E S K U C I on Instagram. Also, real quick, before we get started with the topic of today's program, we have another giveaway going on with the KUCI peeps. It's knocked loose the popular, I think, hardcore band or whatever you want to call them. Got to do some better notes on that regard. But guess what? You can enter until, what's the date? October 14th. So 10 days from now, this giveaway is closing. I decided to run this one for two weeks because it's knocked loose and I like them. Or they're the heaviest thing I've done a giveaway for at least, right? If you want to enter that giveaway, call, don't call, wait, hold on, go to KUCIFM on Instagram and follow the account, and there's a post announcing the Knock to Lose giveaway. Just tag a friend in the comment section, one person, so one comment is one entry, so you can't just like throw in like 30 comments and expect to be prioritized. Unfortunately, I've seen some people do that, it does not help, but you have until the 14th, the last the last day to enter. We're giving away two pairs to Knock Loose's concert at the Observatory Orange County on October 26th. So, if you're interested, go to KUCIFM on Instagram or call the station if a host announces it. Uh, I suppose I can take calls for that if you really want, but I might just say I won't. But if you want to call in at any time during the show to enter in this giveaway or for any other purpose, you can call 949-824-5824. That's 949-824-5824. If you do enter through over the phone, make sure to provide your full name, phone number, and email address so we have some means of contacting you if you're selected. Okay. Today's topic is going to be maybe another one, the Ren and Stimpy show. Maybe another one after that. The reason why, I don't know. I think I saw a YouTube video about it, and then I started watching more of the show again. And I read a little bit. I'm still working through the book about the history and a lot of interesting stuff. And this is the first time in a while I really sat down and actually gave the show uh, a fair shake. Because I remember watching it on streaming. On I think it used to be on Prime Video. Now I think it's on Paramount. Not the full show. Unfortunately, a lot of the season two episodes that were really good aren't on it. So I have to find them somewhere else. But... This show always intrigued me because of its sort of crass and uh, not super kid-friendly nature. Obviously, it was at least a decent amount kid-friendly because it was on Nickelodeon. But speaking of, yes, American Animated Television Series airing on Nickelodeon from 1991 to 1995. Technically, the last episode aired a year later, almost, on a different station. But its original run was August 11th, 1991 to December 16th, 1995, created by one John Chris Felucci. I don't know how to say his name. Crick Felucci? They say, I think it's Chris Felucci. Anyways, he uh, was him and his studio, Spumco, were the original studio animating this show and making the show, and they ended up switching studios. We'll get into that as it's a big part. Uh, and the show also had a not very good, over-the-top, very short-lived revival as a show for adults called Adult Party Cartoon. We're going to get into that, too. This aired on what was Spike TV in 2003 for three episodes. The other three episodes that were made were never shown, and you had to get the DVD for those years later. Okay. (laughs) This is a very zany, over-the-top, nonsensical show. It stars the two titular characters, Ren Hoek. He is a, they say, a quote-unquote, an asthma hound chihuahua. It's a chihuahua. And he is crazy. He is psychotic. He has a very short temper. He has strange things that he likes. And he gets angry very often. And he belittles and sort of abuses his good pal and housemate, Stimpson J. Cat, who is a good-natured and dim-witted Manx cat. Is that what he's supposed to be? He doesn't really look like a cat. 
and he's known for his very, very big, bulbous blue nose. Ren looks a little more like an actual uh, chihuahua, right? It is the third Nicktoon out of all of the uh, Nicktoons. On Nickelodeon in the sort of late 80s, early 90s, whatever you want to call it, they started doing animated original shows around this time. And this was sort of one of the golden ages of the network when they really started picking up steam for being the sort of weird off kilter. We're just going to make some cool stuff, be really creative. And they were looking for animator driven shows. They wanted the creatives, they wanted the artists to sort of lead this ship. Because a lot of the animation in the 80s was very by the numbers. It was made for a financial purpose. And obviously, all animation and all forms of commercial art is made for a financial purpose to make money. But the thing is, that wasn't the only priority a lot of the time. In this case, it kind of was. Stuff like, let me think, a lot of the Deke animated shows, entertainment shows like I'm just thinking of like He-Man, G.I. Joe, a lot of shows like that that were basically just vehicles to sell action figures and their quality wasn't really much. The animation was very stilted and cheap. There wasn't really much in the realm of substance and good quality in terms of either the, the visuals, the way that they're animated, the writing, anything like that. And, you know, very stilted. And John K. himself was very much... Uh, shall we say, part of that. He worked on those shows, those types of studios growing up in his early career as a cartoonist, and he absolutely hated it. He absolutely hated all of it, right? Apparently, the two characters were created in 1978. He saw a photo, the creator saw a photo of a chihuahua in a sweater and a and the cat was inspired by a cartoon, Tweety Bird cartoon, where the cats had big noses, right? Whoopsie poo, whoopsie poopsies. There you go. I dropped a flash drive. Amazing. But he was working on stuff like uh, Super Friends, the Tom and Jerry comedy show, the Jetsons on the 1985 version. And he worked on a lot of these Hanna-Barbera cartoons and he called them the worst animation of all time. But he was quote unquote saved by a sort of crazy off the wall, very uh, interesting director named Ralph Bakshi who actually sort of gets referenced and makes cameos in this show, right? They worked together and then he worked on they worked together, he worked for Ralph, and he made this show called The New Adventures of Mighty Mouse or something like that. And it essentially had a lot more creative input, and John Kay sort of uh, made a new production system to give the animators a lot of creative input, right? And they were sort of pushing the envelope a bit, and somehow Ralph Bakshi apparently sold Mighty Mouse to CBS even though they already had the rights to it. It was something crazy like that. He left after the second season. He then worked on another show, The New Adventures of Beanie and Cecil, so a lot of these sort of 50s, 60s revi- classic cartoon revivals. But some of these people ended up, and, the, and these shows were canceled due to unsuitable for children humor and things like that, pushing the envelope, as they did with Ren Stimpy. He made Spumco, right? And... Uh, John K presented, or they, I think John K came and presented some concepts to the show because to Nickelodeon because they were looking for animators and they wanted, I think the either producer Vanessa Coffee who ended up executive producer for the show who ended up being, shall we say, a saving grace for John K a million times in order to keep the show on the air and not have it uh, change too much with standards and practices. But there was a variety of different shows. One of them was Your Gang or Our Gang, a live action show, like variety show that had a bunch of different cartoons. And one of the kids had, one of the kids of the show had Ren and Stimpy as pets. And there was a parody of the cat and dog genre. Vanessa Coffey was the vice president of animation production at Nickelodeon at the time. 
And she didn't really like the stuff that he pitched, but he saw those two, or she, she saw those two characters and she said, make a show with those two. They look funny, basically, right? And then he pitched to Nickelodeon and it went out and it went well. Interestingly enough, he had to go over to New York and do all this stuff. And there's a funny story about this uh, president of Nickelodeon at the time, Janine something. I forgot. I forgot what exactly her name was. But apparently he was doing this very he get he when he would pitch a show, he would be very energetic, animated, jumping around, yelling, sweating. And apparently middle of doing this. I forgot the name of it. A, a a pack of some sort of breath mint, some tin or something, flew out of his pocket and apparently either landed, according to John Kay and her, uh, between the in her cleavage area, or, as uh, Vanessa Coffey said, in her lap. John Kay, as we'll know, as we'll soon know, is known to not be a reliable narrator, not a good guy at all. He has basically been disgraced from the animation industry, although they're working on a revival of this show. And he will be and not a very reliable narrator. Anyways, they pitched and sold the show and they made the pilot. And then the series officially premiered in 1991. It was coming out the same time as I was going to say the original three Nicktoons. That being Doug and Rugrats. These three all came out at the same time. And they were the original Nicktoons. Which is a thing that sort of continues to this day. Although I think the... The notoriety and the good nature of what people think of Nicktoons have gone down a decent bit since the 90s, right? Right. But it was actually a pretty interesting idea. I mean, you essentially had a show for all eight. You had a block of Nicktoons for all three ages. You had Rugrats talking about babies for the babies, I suppose. Doug was this more much and Rugrats more fantastical, but like easy watching, you know, nothing too crazy. Doug was this more grounded slice of life story about middle school and loneliness and, you know, some like real heartwarming, heartfelt stuff. And this show ended up actually being picked up by Disney. And then that's how he got a movie. But most people didn't like love Doug. I never I've never seen that show. It was it was the more like basic one. Ren and Stimpy was the uh, off the wall, crazy one for the older audiences. In fact, I think they did some internal testing. They did some polling and found that a solid percentage of their viewers were 18 and over. It was like 30-something percent of Ren and Stimpy watchers. And the reason for this is the show just going off the wall. And it basically ends up just not really having any set plot. It's the two characters and some recurring side characters in a variety of odd situations. It doesn't end up being like they have set roles... There's not really a set world that these two characters inhabit. They play different roles. They do different things. They're outer spacemen. They're cowboys. They're rubber nipple salesmen. They're nature show hosts. All kinds of strange stuff. And it does a lot of parodies of contemporary and older media, right? A lot of slapstick. That's the main thing. And the reason why this show worked out so well was mostly due to the gross-out humor, the slapstick, and the quality of the animation of which this was done, right? This show had very good, fluid animation. And this was mostly because of John Kay's sort of, shall we say, imposing uh, leadership. He was a staunch perfectionist. Okay, like a crazy perfectionist to the point where he had this rule. No two poses of these characters can be drawn the same. Every single frame, every single pose has to be unique and different and off model because animation, a lot of shows, their characters have a quote unquote model sheet and you don't want to go too off model. And this is for more, I guess, grounded slice of life. Stuff that doesn't really go crazy wacky off the top, off the chain, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. And, of course, that makes sense. But John Kay was going off of the 50s aesthetic and the old Mary Melodies, Looney Tunes cartoons, Tex Avery. Those sort of 
golden age of theater animated shorts that had a lot of interesting concepts, detailed fluid animation using great use of stuff like squash and stretch, basically getting rid of realism to an extent in order to perfect a sort of fluidity and a bounciness, which is good for comedic effect, which is the whole point of the show. It's meant to be fun entertainment, but they could play off some darker subject matter. Most of the show is does have some very very dark moments that end up making the that ended up being cut, right? There's cameos, running gags, different supporting characters, all sorts of stuff like that, right? And it also didn't have any early merchandising at all, apparently, according to this. Yeah. But Spumco produced the show from 1991 to 1993. He, uh, John K. voiced Ren, and the actor Billy West voiced Stimpy, who he would go on to continue to voice Stimpy and Ren later on, and also a variety of other roles, most notably Philip J. Fry from Futurama, Matt Groening's uh, sci-fi futuristic sitcom, which is a pretty good show. I like it, right? But the early time was simple. Him and Vanessa Coffey got along very well, John Kay, right? She just sort of was like, okay, do what you want, all this stuff. They added another executive to the program, and they wanted to remove some of the episodes or change them up. A lot more standards and practices, a lot more changing of things like this. And according to John, he basically did a bargain with Vanessa. She would let them pass... And he could have some really crazy episodes, but he had to give some heartwarming episodes. And it's according to him, it says, he also said that the program was the safest project he ever worked on. The meaning of safe is spend a third of what they spend now per picture, hire proven creative talent, and let them entertain. Nickelodeon gave them a lot of free reign, but that free reign slowly started to tighten up. And there were some episodes that were big ones. The other problem with John Kay and the show was the fact that episodes would not come out on time. In fact, they would come out months after they were slated to premiere and Nickelodeon would have to keep airing reruns, making advertisers very unhappy because they're paying for all this ad space and you're getting the same episode you've seen a billion times. I'm pretty sure even the second episode of the maybe the first season or the second, I forgot which one, was delayed. From and there's a long 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 break. John was a perfectionist. He wanted every single little detail perfect. And if someone came in with something that he didn't like, he would scrap it over. Apparently, there, and I'm going to go with the best episode that I've seen, my favorite one, I think it's Stimpy's Invention. Uh, most of the show were two 11-minute segments to make up a 22-minute episode, but some of them ended up being a 22-minute segment, like the season two episode, Son of Stimpy, which I watched last night, and apparently I woke my mom up with myself laughing at it. So... Yeah. And I have to admit that I haven't laughed like that at a dumb cartoon in a while. I laughed like a little kid of him him farting. I find that stuff funny. I don't know. I'm still I'm still a kid. Which is a problem apparently. No. Okay. But this episode apparently took a year to create and there was a story about John K apparently having an artist Getting like making an artist redraw the specific shade and design of a gift box for a scene that lasted maybe ten sec five seconds, maybe because he didn't he needed it to look more girly and it ended up being this shade of blue and he kept doing the same shade and eventually he just like, okay, I like this. But those little dumb details like that ended up being a big thing, right? So it ends up being. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. But Ren and Snippy was a uh, storyboard-driven show, like uh, Golden Age cartoons, which added to its sort of animator-friendly thing. And also, one director supervised the entire process. In the 1980s, it was one director for animation, one for voice acting, and there was a top-down approach to making the show in order to tie in with stuff like toys, right? Storyboard-driven shows mean something like you get an outline from the premise. You know, you get a premise. The premise gets approved by the higher-ups. They make an outline. The artists get the outline. And they expand on it, writing the dialogue and gags. So the show is created and filled in through the artist doing the storyboard. 
there's a lot of big expressions, big poses. And one thing that carried over to a show that I think had a very big influence on Rinse, that had a, that this show had a very big influence on SpongeBob. Some people actually worked from this show on SpongeBob, including uh, Doug, Mr. Lawrence, who voice actor, who acted Plankton in the show, well, still does in SpongeBob. And he is a writer on the show as well, or was. I'm not sure if he still does, right? But the main thing is these really beautifully painted but gross out close-ups that would appear on this show and that was entirely ripped for spongebob it was entirely ripped and y'all know the scenes that i'm talking about because everybody knows them very much so they weren't as gruesome for the most part until i guess later in the show where it leaned into more gross out spongebob wise but yeah let's see here what else is worth stuff like uh backgrounds turning from like actual ink and paint like beautiful watercolors into these sort of blotchy stains of ink usually when one of the characters goes crazy psycho or something like that and a variety of music that uh apparently most of the budget was spent on animation so they had to basically use stock music libraries and a lot of the music in Ren and Stimpy is heard in Spongebob with those same libraries. So, wow. Very interesting. And the the opening theme was made by a few employees of the show. They didn't want to make an educational series. And that apparently bothered Nickelodeon. A lot of segments of this show ended up being changed. Excluding references to religion, politics, alcohol, violence, and tobacco. The episode Powder Toast Man had a cross removed from the Pope's hat and the credit was changed to The Man with the Pointy Hat. Um, that same episode apparently had a segment featuring the burning of the United States Constitution and Bill of Rights, which was removed. There was an episode about Ren and going into the army too and the horse was an army member and he was making out with a little sheep that looked like a dog. And the sheep was drawn very cute. Yeah, there is a lot of violent, gruesome, or suggestive scenes, innuendo and things like that, that were removed because of this. And there was one episode that actually ended up being banned, and this was the straw that broke the camel's back for John Kay's time on the show. Before that, let's do Snippy's Adventure real quick. This episode, I think is the one that I would recommend anybody to watch if you're willing to get into the show, right? It's a C... I believe it's... Is it the last episode of season one? Let's take a look here. Da, 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 da. Yes, it's the last episode. And apparently... Yeah. Uh, episode 10 aired on ni- October 1991. Yeah. Well, there's actually not a massive big delay for the original ones. August 11th, August 5th, August 10th, 1990 for uh, the original premiere. I don't know. The theatrical pilot. I don't know. Let's see. 1990, August 1991, August 25th, September 8th, September 15th, September 29th, October 6th, November 10th, a big month gap, and then February of 1992, which is when uh, Black Hole and Stimpy's Invention air together. We're going to go with Snippy's Invention. This one's pretty pretty uh, interesting. Ooh, there's a little sell about it. I wish I could buy that sell, but it probably cost thousands of dollars. It was the season finale of season one, right? And basically, Snippy makes a bunch of inventions. He's usually a stupid, dumb cat. But this time, he's smart for some reason. And he makes a bunch of stupid and useless impre- in- inventions. Let's see. There was an invention where it was an automatic razor that shaved Ren's belly. And, you know, he does have fur, apparently, even though it doesn't look like it. He's a chihuahua, and they're not totally hairless or have a little fluff on them sometimes. Also, my dog. Shout out to Janie. Love you. Um, But, right, there was a few, and then uh, there was the Stay Put songs, and the Stay Put Socks is the first one that Ren really likes. And he's like, Stimpy, this is great. How did you make it? And he's like, oh, gee, Ren, I just used super glue. 
So he basically just filled socks with glue, and he couldn't get him. And, of course, Ren is absolutely fuming at him and is about to come and, you know, slap him uh, five ways to Sunday, as happens a lot on the show. And, they're you know, they get beat up a lot by other characters, too. There's a lot of... Uh, a lot of father figures abusing Ren and Stimpy in, I guess, comedic ways on this show, which has some unfortunate re- unfortunate basis in uh, the creator's father. In fact, the episode that got banned, Man's Best Friend, was basically all about this. But we'll get into that. But it's a pretty, it's a good concept, right? So Ren's mad. Seems like, oh, he's not happy. So he builds a helmet that forces him to be happy, and eventually. He's losing his mind, having to do nice things for Stimpy. And then he plays his favorite song, Happy, Happy, Joy, Joy. And this is a pretty well-known one. I'm not going to play it because, I don't know, kind of corny, but Happy, Happy, Joy, Joy, Joy. If you think you ain't the granddaddy of all liars, I'll I'll teach your grandmother to suck eggs. It's a very weird song made for the show. Anyways. Ren finds it. Ren goes off to the. It's a good because the whole song, the whole song plays, and it's a whole sequence. You know, they're dancing, and they're all, you know, they're very happy. And then Ren runs over, finds a ham, finds a hammer, and just starts smashing the helmet off him, synced up to the music. And it's a really good scene because you see like the visceralness of the of the of the smack of the hammer and the background changing colors, and that the way that is, it's so smooth and it's so impactful. It looks great. And then he runs over to Stampy and just about to strangle him. He's like, I'm really happy. Being angry is what makes him happy. This one took a year to complete. Right? And according to this, the uh, Bob Camp, who was... What was he even? What did he even do before? He was a storyboard artist and a big, con- and a big thing like that. Uh... But he ended up being the main supervisor for the show after uh, Ren and Stimpy got switched over, which we'll get into after this, right? Bob says uh, he had the idea of a story called Stimpy's Inventions, where Ren serves as an unwilling guinea pig, right? You get the point. Camp later stated that John fell in love with the idea that he constantly refined everything and to the point of ridiculousness until everything was perfect. John apparently told Bob Camp, look, why don't we have him, Ren, go on a real fit and go insane at this point, and then Stimpy decides he makes he's going to make the invention to cure Ren. The executives hated it. Apparently they wanted a scene... They asked them to change a scene where Stimpy's like using tools, but he's using a duck to drill something and they asked him and they to solder together because that might inspire children to Im- irritate imitate using ducks as tools and instead use a woodpecker right and john just sent a memo back he asked them you know, the, the, one of the animators or something and then john just said sent a note back saying no apparently he had to beg Vanessa Coffey to do it the storyboard didn't work apparently a scene where Ren under the control of the helmet submissively licks Stimpy which did not make past the storyboard phase owing to its homoerotic elements there were a lot of those in the show there's actually one which apparently was a huge source of controversy and was going to get cut didn't get cut where in Son of Stimpy, to Ren to get Stimpy to go back inside, he points to the mistletoe and does, like, fluttery eyes at him. You know what happens under the mistletoe, right? Yeah, whatever. And apparently, it was just the micromanagement of John Kay and his weird perfectionism ended up being, uh, doing it. And he, apparently, he beat everybody to death almost to do it. And he... And he decided to keep uh, changing the scenes and redrawing them. And that's what kept holding it up. In fact, the studio that been that was a subcontractor had to fire some of its staff for a bit because there wasn't enough material. Apparently, it was all very difficult to draw. It was really difficult. 
But I think the show is, I think the episode goes very well. It's a good piece of slapstick, good stuff. Highly recommend y'all go check that out. Also, the views and opinions of this program do not necessarily represent those of KCI, its management, or the UC Board of Regents. This is Bass Tunes with uh, me, Ari. If you want to check out any of my other stuff with regards to this show, go to Bass Tunes KUCI on Instagram. I'm going to quickly dive into the John Case firing and replacement, and then we're going to spend the rest of this show, or as long as I can talk about this, talking about a dull party cartoon, and uh, yeah. So we're going to go to break after that real quick, because my throat hurts. I need water, and you can't have water in a radio studio. No, you can't. Nuh-uh, uh nuh uh nuh uh nuh uh but yeah, people love this episode. Okay, so basically, uh, people were getting very, 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 very annoyed, the higher-ups at Nickelodeon, about this whole thing, right? And they really just did not get along. John K. would only communicate with Nickelodeon through his lawyer after some point, and apparently a lot of the tension was the fact that they weren't, they were just not delivered on time. He did not care about deadlines. He even told Nickelodeon at one point, it's good. they're going to be out when they're out, and they're going to cost what they cost, regarding to the uh, the, sh- the episodes. But some of the delays were also attributed to Nickelodeon's prolonged approval process and withdrawal of approval from scenes and episodes that had previously been approved. John Kay himself cites the episode Man's Best Friend, which never aired and was banned from airing until 2003, and it still doesn't really air on the actual network as the primary reason for his dismissal so why was this all right well it's going to be the second half of the second episode of season two it's not it's not i think what is it i think i'm i think i'm paramount just is, is it ren's toothache out west or what is it is it just uh i think it's just ren's best i don't know ren's toothache is supposed to be the uh the second half of this episode or was it? Was it meant to be? It was one of the few that was on time. Okay, anyways. Um, it was going to be the second half of the second episode, but it got pulled before airing, and it was just the pilot. All right. And eventually... Actually, Ren and Stimpy learn about obedience after George Licker American, which is apparently his real name, and when he appeared, they censored the word liquor on a different episode. So it was, it was like, I'm George... American. It was a very, very, very quick and dirty cut. And he takes them home and swears to make them champions. And he adopts them as pets. And he's doing drill, and he's treating them like a drill sergeant to do, to be a good, obedient pet. How, and one of the big issues is the fact that they kept getting, that their, you know, the dog treat was a cigar shaped treat. You know, don't want that, do you? And then they're taught disobedience. They're taught discipline. In order to to learn discipline, they're taught to disobey. They tell them not to go to the couch. Then he instructs them to do so in order to not be punished. In order to be punished, and then he starts yelling at them really hard. And they both get terrified. And uh, Ren collapses to the floor sobbing, and a terrified Stampy jumps onto the couch as George had instructed, only to be yelled at. Stimpy becomes scared, thinking he is going to be punished. Instead, George compliments him for following orders and gives him another dog treat. And, you know, they're doing whatever. And the final thing is, you know, he's yelling at them a lot, whatever. The last one is to protect their master. So they have to, before they can learn to defend, they need to learn to attack. Stimpy is basically, you know, total obedient dog, even though he's a cat. Because he's our kind and beloved master. And Ren's like, I can do it. And this is where the this is the part that basically, you know, sealed the deal in this episode never airing. Uh, he picks up a oar and just beats the crap out of George Licker. And it's really detailed. It cuts to black and white for a segment. I don't know if it's actually. I need to look this up real quick. Uh, where is this? Did, did, did this get changed? Ren and Stimpy, man's best friend ending. Make sure I'm on mute here. Because, okay, well, that's not it. 
Yeah, Ren beats George Licker. Let's see, yeah. No, it's no, it's not actually. Is it actually meant to? No, I think it's just it's because like, did they cut it to black and white to not be as offensive? I'm like, well, no, this sh this episode never aired. This very slow motion scene of the ore just smacking his face, smushing his face, twirling it around, his eyeball popping out of the socket, and just absolutely beating everything. And apparently, this was too much for the kids, and Nickelodeon was like. Okay. No, we can't we can't do this. And also brief scatological poop humor. And around the time of this, he got fired from Nickelodeon. Apparently, I heard this in a video, I don't know if it's 100% true. John K might have uh what did he do? He might have made tape copies of this episode and mailed them out to the press or people because he was very upset at the fact that this would not be aired. And apparently this was the final straw because Vanessa was like, okay, he can't go behind our backs like this. We can't do that. So, unfortunately, I guess the straw broke the camel's back and he got fired. But it was also some other stuff. Bad tensions, but this was the straw that broke the camel's back. Games animation was created. Now it's called Nickelodeon Animation Studio at DBA. Oh, it's a, it's a legal legal name? Registered company name? I don't know. Let's see. Um. Mm -mm -mm. Apparently, Chris... Coffee asserts that John was in breach of contract for not delivering on time, creating disturbing content, and going over budget. John K. suspected the real reason was that Nickelodeon was more uncomfortable with his crude humor. So they negotiated a settlement with him because they bought the rights to the characters from him. So I guess he can't make any money off it or whatever. Um... They originally wanted to offer him a role as a creative consultant, but he declined, and he kind of stormed out. He kind of got really mad at the people, because some of the people from Spumco ended up moving on to games. They had this own studio, so they called it Games Animation. They didn't want to make a new corporation. And Bob Camp ended up being uh, the creative supervisor. And they ended up being the main animation studio for that. Right. Then uh, games and so they ended up doing it and the show looks different because at, at this point, sometime in season two, they switched over to digital ink and paint versus cell shaded. So it looked a little brighter, a little cleaner, a little saturated. And the budget has gone cheaper. I think it's trying, you know, uh, Ren's voice is now done by Billy West and he sounds totally different. And, you know, it goes for a few more seasons, but people just don't like it as much. I forgot the first episode of season three is pretty decent, but other than that, I haven't really seen the rest of the show. What do you know? I made a whole episode about a whole hour of a show, and I never actually ended up talking about all of it. And it's 443, and the show's almost over. Great. Um, Apparently, Games Animation did do other shows after this. You know, the Nickelodeon soon this was going on. They made Mo Rocco's Modern Life, so that was their fourth Nicktoon. Or then Hey Arnold, The Angry Beavers, Cat Dog. Some stuff. And what else? Nickelodeon Animation Studio Productions. SpongeBob. United Plankton Pictures. Basically, a lot of the new Nicktoons were done by... Hey. Throw me off. Anne of Average Community just threw me off, y'all. Send her a lot of hate. Nope, don't do that. Okay, anyways, show ended in 1996, and then uh, there was this network called the TNN, or the new TNN. Let's look it up. Spike TV? What do you want to call it? Paramount Network? It was called the Nashville Network. That was apparently the television network, right? Uh, it was for country music, and then it got renamed to the National Network, which is called TNN, right? And then it got... Yeah. So, there you go, right? And 
Then it got rebranded in 2003 as Spike TV being the first network for men, for young adult males, right? And they launched an adult animation series with three shows, three main ones, I think, Gary the Rat, Stripperella, and Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon, which is what we're going to talk about, okay? It ended up premiering on June 26, 2003, and was removed from the network after July 24th, two days after I was born. Shout out. Um, let's see. Well, Viacom, or at this point, Viacom, that's not Viacom anymore, is it? No, it's Paramount Global now. But, you know, the company that owned Nick and also owned this uh, Spike TV network, right? And also MTV, right? They were like, hey, John, uh, we're doing an adult animated blog. How about you just make, like, a really extreme off-the-wall version of Ren and Stimpy? Just go nuts. You can do whatever you want. And they were like, wow, right? Like, wow. They gave him a lot of control of writing, and he wanted to make them aimed at adult audiences. And some, if not most of these, some of these scripts were used from the nine old ones from the 90s that he had written with a more adult theme. The premiere episode, Onward and Upward, was actually one of them, although technically another episode aired. But, you know, whatever. Uh, uh, this one was apparently too much for Nickelodeon's case. And, well, the series was premiered, but they only made three out of nine of the episodes they ordered on time. Another budget problem, and they used up all... So... For the budget that Spike gave them for nine episodes, they spent them on three. So the same problem, right? Some of the artists from the original series came back and the uh, people who, but the people who kept going with games animation, including Bob Camp, did not return. Uh, And everyone, and Billy West, who did Stimpy, did not come back. Because he said he thought it wasn't funny, and he thought if he did this, it would hurt his career. Which it could have. Eric Bowser was hired to replace West as Stimpy. And I mean, he did... I mean, he's voicing Looney Tunes characters now, so it's not the total end of the world, right? (sighs) Says advertiser objected to some of the new show's content. And Man's Best Friend was actually premiered as the first episode of it, which is interesting. Let's see what else. Nobody liked it. Absolutely nobody liked it. It's It was just too much gross out. The shows, the episodes lasted a billion years. Apparently the first episode, yeah, the first episode didn't even, the first one that was produced was not the was not the first one aired. It didn't even air on the network, and this was Naked Beach Frenzy, because they go to a nude beach. Ren wants to mingle with the women, but the women are more attracted to Stimpy. Fun. And the first episode that was actually aired was Onward and Upward, and this one was not done by John Kay at all, apparently. Vincent Waller. Although I think John Kay had something about it. Anyways. No, he directed it. Uh, tired of living inside of a homeless man's mouth, Ren Stimpy, Stimpy, presented as a sexually involved couple, move to the inside of a spittoon after Stimpy pulls his secret stash of money into it and proceed to live the high life, consuming the bodily fluids of bar flies. So the episode is them sitting, acting like they're fancy. Oh, we're going upwards. But they're literally just eating like boogers and vomit. And apparently it's funny. And I forgot how long these episodes were. But another problem with Dull Party Cartoon was the fact that it lasted. These episodes were anywhere from 30 minutes to 40. 40 minutes. And it wasn't like it was 40 minutes of just too much gross out. I mean there's Ren Seeks Help where Ren goes to a therapist. And then... He basically, the whole episode, a lot of it is him just like torturing animals in a apparently comedic fashion. So he's just like a psychotic guy. Apparently, uh, it's because he got into an argument with the Stimpster. I don't care. Fire Dogs, a classic episode of Fire, 
got a sequel, and he he morphs into Ralph Bakshi, the guy I talked about earlier, li- and voiced by himself, and they live a bachelor lifestyle. And if I recall correctly, the scene that I saw was a date's about to come over to Ralph's house. He took a mega dump in the toilet, and they can't get the toilet unclogged, so Stimpy has to pull out the thingamabob in the toilet, and the scene goes on for like a minute and a half of just the same thing. That's the problem with the adult party cartoon. It's not the fact that, oh, he's picking a poop at the toilet. I mean, that's gross, right? And I'm not a huge fan of gross out myself, but it wasn't, but you're going to take like a billion extra seconds to get to the joke. Just shorten the episode. No episode of this cartoon should be 40 minutes long. 40 minutes. And that's not even this episode. It's the one altruists, which is apparently the worst episode because of the fact that it's not, that it's 40 minutes long. These are episodes, and this one wasn't even aired either. Fire Dogs 2 had to get cut into two parts. And then, okay, whatever. So there's, and there's altruists, and then the last one was uh, Stimpy's pregnant which is he thinks he's but is he pregnant i don't know but he had he just had to he just had to go to the bathroom and that's literally just copying a beavis and butthead uh episode called pregnant pause one of my favorite ones because beavis has to go to the toilet but he find but he 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 watches a tv clip and he just keeps freaking out over the fact that he thinks he's pregnant And the same dun 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 music he's playing every time, and it's a very dumb and funny thing. But imagine that, but not funny. And this is probably what this episode is. And then there was apparently a scrapped episode named "Life Sucks" that was going to be on the DVD. That Ren explains to Stimpy that life sucks and all these tragedies, and it makes Stimpy go crazy. And then that's how Ren seeks help. Uh, that's how it goes into. And some of it was done, originally done for Nickelodeon, maybe for a movie for the show. But, of course, that was canceled. And uh, apparently, like, a decent bit of the, a decent bit of it had been made. You can actually find the animatic with voices online. That's besides the point, though. Okay. Nobody liked it. Everyone thought it was gross, boring, and just overly shocking. So, I didn't even get to the point of what I was even going to say. But, uh... You know, in in conclusion with this uh with this adult party cartoon thing, that is the best example of a show of what happens when you have creative restrictions that make you get creative. Okay. With this original series, this was meant for kids, quote unquote. They still had some. So they had to sneak in innuendo. They had to push the boundaries. They had to get clever and funny. And a lot of the joke was, oh, we can't do this on a kid's show. But they did it. People like Spongebob for that reason, too. You know, stuff that the kids will find funny and stuff that the adults will like, but it'll slip over the kids' heads. There's just way more than that, right? Like, this show aired on MTV and Comedy Central. Come on now, right? But, 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 when you have free reign, free creative control, and you're basically told, yeah, just go adult, go nuts, you lose all of the creativity and the fun about it. Then it's just boring. Then you're just like, oh, great. So honestly, I might sit down and force myself to watch this altruist episode and the rest of them. And I'm, I'm going to find a copy of the episodes from season two that I wanted to watch that aren't on streaming. Because these aren't on streaming for sure. You have to get the DVD or, you know, find it online somewhere. And yeah, like, I'm considering doing a edit. Because I swear we can edit this 40-minute episode called Altruist down to, like, 25 minutes and it'd be a million times funnier just by cutting, just by making the jokes not take, like, a minute and a half to do. Okay? All right. Let's uh, pull up what I need to do to get this show over with. Let's see here. Five minutes and... Okay. All right. That's it for today's program. This has been Bass Tunes on KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. I'm Ari, all right? Go to B-A-S-E-D-T-U-N-E-S-K-U-C-I on Instagram for more about this show. Stay tuned next week. Same time, same base channel. This is the first episode of the new quarter, and I want to thank y'all so much. Stay based, everybody. Fred Friday! Friday!